Hello, friends. Welcome to Dancing Water. I'm Susan, and we're here to do some restorative yoga together. I'm so glad you're here for your Dancing Water daily practice. Thank you for taking the time for yourself, for your body, for your mind. It makes a difference. For those of you who've never practiced restorative yoga before, this is a different kind of yoga than others that you may know of. This is a practice that is designed to create relaxation and letting go rather than stretch or strength or looking any particular way. So the, the rule of thumb for this practice is do whatever you need to do to be as comfortable as possible. We're going to do a, a couple of poses today that you may have heard of before or even done before in other kinds of yoga, and, um, and I'll be guiding you to do them in such a way so that they are creating deep relaxation rather than any stretch or strain or effort. Okay? So here's what you're going to need. Uh, a few props that you could, should be able to find in your house. Um, two standard size towels. Um, you can see that what I've done here, what I'd like you to do is take them and fold them long ways and then fold them again and then fold that into thirds. So it looks like this. I call it a towel loaf. So you want two of those. Uh, then a small blanket. I like one that's very soft that I can fold in different uh, configurations so that it has different width or different height. Um, but I also like it soft. And then two uh, firm pillows. My favorite chicken pillow. I love to use for restorative with you guys. And um, and you want something, I use the ones that were on my sofa, so you want something that's not going to completely compress when you put any weight on it. I also recommend some kind of eye covering. This is just a small towel. You can use a scarf or an eye pillow or a bandana or whatever you have. Um, that's optional for sure, but I like it particularly if you're practicing in the daytime, and giving your eyes uh, some darkness gives the nervous system the signal to unwind, and that's what we want. So we're, at, oh, and I also recommend having some kind of beverage for uh, after our practice. Um, I like a warm tea, a decaffeinated tea, so that it's not stimulating to the nervous system, but rather soothing. Um, but water works great too, or whatever would taste delicious to you after we practice. So let's just begin. I'm going to uh, sit up, just find a comfortable seat. And just take a moment to allow yourself to arrive in this time that you have so generously given yourself. Take a couple breaths and just notice your body. And we're going to begin with what's called alternate nostril breathing. It's a way of relaxing the nervous system. It's a very simple practice and it's a very ancient one. So begin by taking your right hand and fold down your first two fingers so that your ring finger and thumb are up. And what we're going to do is use the thumb to block off the right nostril and the ring finger to block off the left nostril. We'll do it in alternating. We won't do it at the same time. And a full cycle of this breathing is in through the left nostril, out through the right, then in through the right, and out through the left. So that's a full cycle. So we'll just do a couple together. So begin by blocking off your left, your right nostril with your thumb and inhale through the right, the left nostril. 
Switch your fingers and exhale through the right. Inhale right. Switch and exhale left. Inhale left and exhale right. Inhale right and exhale left. Do two more at your speed, taking your time. Switching at the top, always ending with an exhale through the left nostril. Balancing the brain. Reprogramming the nervous system giving it the signal to let go. And the next time you exhale through your left nostril, take your time, just drop your hand and take two full, deep, long, even breaths, letting your shoulders relax, letting your eyes relax. And then gently, just take your left hand down to the floor and let your right hand come up overhead. And just press down through your hips. Just gently get a little stretch along the side of your body. And inhale up, get nice and tall at the top. And then press your right hand down and let your left hand come over. And you can look up if that feels good on your neck or look ahead or just close your eyes. Just feel your rib cage. Let's do that again on either side. Letting your ribs fan open toward the sky. And then fold. Oh, check out your jaw, see if you can let that go. Good. And then come center and take your right hand to the top of your right chest. Let your left hand come over your head, and but very gently, this is not a pull, just using the weight of your hand, create a little opening through your neck on the right side. And then do the same thing, very gently release, and then do the same thing on the other side. Your left hand comes to the top chest. Just use the weight of your hand without pulling at all. And then release, come up and let your head float up. And then just gaze down and let your head fall. And then open your eyes and look up and let your head lift. Just let your chin float a little bit. Good. And then come to center, and just bending your knees and just pull your belly in. I'm gonna do this from the side so you can see this. Pull your belly in and just round and just create some space along the back of your body. And then sit up really tall and lift your heart. And then one more time, come back and round back. And lift up. Good. Nice. So let's begin our postures today. Let's start by taking your blanket 
and take it in uh, a long fold like this, a long rectangular fold, and put it right in the middle of your mat or your carpet or whatever soft surface that you're on. And then take your, your hips right to the edge of that, and then take one of your uh, towel lobes and have that ready. We're going to do something called supported tree. So begin by rolling back onto your back and extend your legs long and extend your arms overhead. So reach your body as long as you can. Take an inhale breath and then just relax and let it go. And now Draw your knee up to the sky and then just let it fall open onto your towel loaf. So the sole of your foot is in contact with your leg. It doesn't have to be pushing against it. You just want to feel a gentle opening. Check out your hips. You don't want your hips too skewed. Just let your long leg dangle straight down from your, from your pelvis and let your knee just fall open on the support. Now, depending on your, the flexibility of your, your hips, you may want to fold your towel loaf over so there's a little more lift there. And you can even put two towel loaves there. Take your arms and put them into goal post arms, just giving your chest a little bit of an opening. And if you'd like your eye covering, you can put that on here. Pressing it down, giving your eyes the signal that they can relax. And stop the constant seeing. Allow them just to see color and shape from behind the eyelids. And let your breath do exactly what it wants to do. Letting your ribs float up as you inhale and then sink down gently like a feather falling in a gentle breeze. Feeling your breath smooth out. Noticing the sensation of your right foot against your leg. Sometimes when we're practicing, your body, your body will be called to take a, a bigger breath, a deeper breath, and just allow your breath to choose how deep it wants to go. It may go very gentle and very light, or it may have a deeper quality on occasion. So just let it do what it wants to do. In this posture called tree, imagine roots reaching down into soft, fertile earth while branches reach away, creating lots of space in the whole structure of your body. Make sure your chin is tucked a little bit so the back of your neck is long. And with every exhale, let your bones sink a little deeper. Mm -hmm. 
Let your breath float a little lighter. Notice your hands, just letting your fingers curl or extend exactly as they like. Like new leaves unfurling from the end of branches, let your fingers and hands be soft. Taking just a couple more breaths on this side, noticing the sensation at your inner thigh, your shin bone. Noticing your pelvis. And then on your next inhale breath, very gently just extend your bent leg long and give yourself a moment here. Maybe just wag your tail a little bit. Just rock your pelvis. Feel your body symmetrical on the floor. And then gently reach down and take your towel loaf and put it on the other side. And gently bend your left knee in and let it fall onto the loaf. Letting your left foot rest on your thigh, and then check out your hands and arms. You may want to let your hands come and rest on your body, on your ribs, or on the floor, just letting them fall at an angle. With every breath, letting yourself soften another layer. Notice if any tension gathers at your jaw or your shoulders, your forehead, or your belly. See if you can let your breath wend its way into any places of holding. And let them unwind. Our days can be so filled. Our focus can be so much on doing that we can be wound tight and not even realize it. It's often only when we take the time to let our body come back to its natural state of relaxation that we realize how much tension we were holding. Let your belly and top ribs billow out like a sail and then soften back down. Feel this resilient quality, how the shape of your body can shift and then return to its natural orientation.
This resilience is your natural state. And this practice is designed to help you return to your resilient state. And then the next time you breathe in, let your bent knee, your left knee, just gently soften and lengthen out. Feel your arms reach overhead. Get a little stretch on the right side of your body and then the left just a little bit. Ah. And then gently draw your knees into your chest. Roll to one side. Pause there just for a breath. And then let yourself use your top hand. Push into the floor. Let your head come up last. And reorient into upright. Letting your head float up. Yeah, softening your eyes. Mm, nicely done, you guys. So now, we'll take another supported posture, taking your two pillows and put them side to side in the middle of your mat or carpet, and then put your Blanket right on top again. We're making a bolster. If you have a yoga bolster, you can also use that here. What we're going to do here is called supported pigeon pose. So you may have done this before, and this can be a very intense stretch when done in a more young kind of way. But we're going to be doing this in a very restorative, very comfortable way. So I'm going to give you a variety of options. And I really invite you to keep asking yourself, how could I be more comfortable? How could I create more ease in this posture? Okay? So turn to face your bolster and take your two towels, and they should be on either side of your body. And then I'm going to just move it so you can see. Then take your left heel very close to your groin. So you want to feel your knee pointing almost maybe to like 11 o'clock. So you're not opening up or you're not pushing the foot away here. We're just creating a release through the lower back. And then release your right foot behind you. And then you may want to just scoot yourself or scoot your bolster closer and letting the front of your body reach up here and then softly come down. So depending on your hips, you want to take your towel and just support under your hip here. And depending on your body, you may want to take the other towel on the other side and support your other hip. Your hands can rest just flat on your mat, or I love to have them tucked underneath the bolster. Now give yourself a moment here and ask yourself, how could I feel more easeful? Take a deep breath and feel your back body billowing up. And as you exhale, just ask, do I need any adjustments to create more ease? Now, another thing that can feel good for some people is to take your back leg and turn it on its side. So turn it so that the arch of your foot is on the floor. That doesn't work for everybody, but it may give you a little more easeful feeling through your hips. And if that works, you're welcome to do that. Or take it long with the top of your foot relaxing onto the floor. Now again, we're not looking 
for a super duper stretch here, what we're looking for is a way of releasing and letting the body unwind itself. And as that happens, you may find that you may need to make some micro adjustments and that's fine. But just keep asking what would feel more comfortable. Notice your shoulders. Maybe adjust your hands to let your shoulders be as relaxed as they can be. Like two smooth stones receiving the sunshine on a spring day. Just let them soften into your back body. Noticing the sensation of your belly moving as you breathe. And then as you're ready, very gently just take your hands under your shoulders, push up and look up. And then gently roll to your left side. And let's do it on the other side. So I'm going to shift to the other side of my, my mat so that I can just keep facing you. But you can just extend the other leg and tuck the, tuck the first leg, the long leg in. So So this time, It's your right leg tucking in with your heel very close to your groin and your knee pointing just on a very slight angle. The back leg again can be long on the floor or it can be turned on the side if that feels better. Have your towels right near your hips, lengthening your spine out, and soften down. Taking your towels and tucking them underneath, let your hips feel supported. And again, your hands can be just flat on the floor, or they can be underneath your pillow. So as you arrive in this shape, ask yourself, what would be more easeful? Noticing your low back. The sacral, the big, broad bone at the base of your spine. And imagine warm water just pouring down and out, spreading out around your hips and pooling around your body. Sighing, letting yourself breathe just as your body needs to breathe.
as your tissues begin to let go, you may find layers of tension, layers to peel back and release. What can you soften? What could you let go of? Dropping not only physical tension, but worry, anxiety, fear. Letting it pour out. Release it into the earth. And know that it can take exactly whatever it is. Letting your cheeks soften. And then as you're ready, hands come under shoulders, and again, pushing down slowly, lifting up, lifting your chest, look up just a little bit, and then roll to your right side and draw in your knees. Yeah, how are you feeling? Slowly, in this practice, using the transitions between postures as part of the practice. So do them slowly, methodically. Taking your two pillows and stacking them on top of each other. And we're going to do a supported bridge, a variation on supported bridge. So if you... the if you want a little more stretch, a little more opening through your hip flexors, then two pillows. I'm actually going to use two pillows and one of my towels. But if your hips are pretty tight, one pillow may be plenty. Then take your blanket or your towel and set it up as a pillow for your head at the top of your mat. Come over to your pile of props and sit up on it. And then scoot your tailbone all the way to the edge and then roll back. So your sacrum, that long, that big heavy bone is draped over the pillow. And then take your feet and flatten them on the floor. Okay? So your elbow, I mean, your knees are pointing toward the ceiling. Your feet are flat and relaxed. And just pause here and just feel this. Let your shoulders relax. And check out your head, making sure that your chin is tucked a little bit. This is another signal to your nervous system to relax and let go. Noticing the sensation in your hip joints. So I chose this posture today because I was talking to a friend who's working from home and she said that she's been sitting all the time. And when we sit, these little muscles at your hip flexors get very contracted. And so this is a way of releasing them a little bit, letting them soften. And then leaving your left foot on the floor. You can just stay here, but here's a variation that you're welcome to use. Draw your right knee in, lace your fingers, and without pulling, 
Just let the weight of your hands and arms give a little tug on your right knee, just below your knee joint. So it's, you're actually, your hands are resting on your shin. Take a couple breaths. And you can experiment, you can play with letting your left leg go long if that feels good. Or just leave it flat on the floor. And then very small here, this is not a big movement, just let your right knee come just a little bit to the right and a little bit to the left. So again, we're not looking for a stretch here. We're just looking for a little bit of movement in the fascia and the connective tissue around your hips. And then again, lacing your fingers and just gently pull it toward you. And then release your foot down. And again, your hat is totally fine to just stay in this position. But if you like, you can do it on the other side, letting your left knee come up and just letting the weight of hands and arms gently give a little bit of weight into your leg, either straightening or leaving the right leg bent. In a very small movement, left knee comes in and out. We give it lots of support. Move your leg with your hand. Rather than using the muscles in your leg and your hip, use your hands and arms to move your leg. So it's almost like you're stirring your big femur bone just a tiny bit in the hip socket. And then lace your fingers again. Gently give it a, 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 a gentle pull in. And then release and let both feet come flat on the floor. And a couple of options here. You can let, let your feet come about as wide as your mat and let your knees come in toward the center and knock together in this restorative posture. Or you may want to play with letting both legs come long. To me, this feels wonderful, but it doesn't feel great to everybody. So choose what feels wonderful to you. So if you are spending a lot of time sitting, some kind of opening in this way can be really restorative to your hips and to your low back. If your legs are long, just gently, slowly, one at a time, bring them back into the bent legs. And just for a breath or two, if you like, you can let your legs float up toward the ceiling, finding a balance point, just letting your feet and the fluids and blood in your legs pour down into your belly and giving your heart a little rest. And then when you're ready, just let your knees come down, or your feet come down. Put your feet into the floor. Just move your bolster aside. And just take one or two breaths, just flat on the floor. Just feel your body reorient without any pop, um, 
without any props. Just feel that. Letting yourself soften into the floor. And then take one arm overhead, draw your knees into your chest and roll to one side. Pressing your hand into the floor and come up into seated position. And if you have some tea or water, get it near you. And you may notice that your body temperature goes down when you do this kind of practice. So you may want to have a blanket. I sometimes just like to have a blanket over my belly or my back or my shoulders just to feel a little bit of warmth. So just noticing sensation in your body. So we talk sometimes, we've been talking this week about the concept of resilience and how it manifests in the body, but also in the mind, in the heart, in the spirit. And the definition of resilience is the combination of both the strength and the ability to bounce back, as well as the ability to soften, be elastic, be pliable. And that's very much about what we do in this practice. And imagine a rubber ball and its ability to rebound, to bounce back, has everything to do with how much it can soften into the ground, right? So if you have like a, bar, a bocce ball or something that was solid and hard and you dropped it onto the floor, it would never be able to bounce, or if it did, not very much. But if you had like an India rubber ball that gives when it hits the earth, it's going to bounce way back. So your resilience has everything to do with how much you are able to soften. So I invite you to use this practice, to practice softening, letting yourself release completely, and that will serve you in bouncing back. So taking your tea, or your water, taking a moment of gratitude for yourself, for your body, for your generous and wise choice to practice today. Take a breath in and smell. Let it go. And ask yourself, what is it that I want to take with me from this practice into the rest of this day? And what is it that I want to let go? Take a breath in and out and take a sip. Feeling the liquid move down through your throat into your belly. like spring rain landing on seeds of intention. This is what I want to take with me. This is what I want to let go. Thank you, friends. Please let me know how I can be of service. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Leave a comment on this video or any of the other practices 
that you'll find there. Ask for notifications so that you know whenever any new practices are posted. You can also find lots of information and resources at my blog, focuspocusnow.com, where I'm posting regularly about all of the work that I am putting out into the world. And friends, this is a donation-based practice. I offer it freely, and if you have the means and have the inclination to offer some sort of donation toward the continued creation of these practices for both you and anyone who, no matter their means, no matter what they can afford, I'd be grateful for any contribution you can make. You can find a link below. I look forward to seeing you soon. Take good care. Have a great day.